Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King. And I'm here with a brand new series for you guys to enjoy. What if Naruto was a prodigy from the Uchiha Senju and Uzumaki clan, yes. The blood of all three prodigy clan will be in his veins. Making Naruto something beyond, beyond what was expected of any normal ninja. However, if you want to enjoy, just sit back, relax and yeah, enjoy. And don't forget to go ahead and check out the other channels, yes. I indeed have four guys which I post what you fun every single day for guys enjoy. Yes, you heard that correctly. Every single day, guys. Comment down below and tell me if you're new so I can reply and talk back to you guys. And also, don't forget to go ahead and check out the brand new episodes on Prince and the other ones, guys. So, without further ado or wasting more time, don't forget to turn on the bell notification to see exactly when I post. Let's begin this now, guys. On the 10th of October, in the dead of night, the nine kill fox tried to bring the village to its knees. The ninja of the village fought valiantly, however, many of them fall. In the end though, the four Tokage had no choice but to seal the fox inside of his son, making him the next Jinjulke, though there was a cost. The cost was his and his wife's life. Time skip six years later. The wind blew gently as a young boy sat on top of the monument as he had shoulder length spiky blonde hair. As he combed a bang out of his face, brushing it to the side, his blue eyes glistening in the night as the moon reflected down on him. His skin was fair, however his most prominent feature was the three marks on both of his cheeks, whister marks. He was wearing a blue shirt with navy pants and sandals. This boy was Naruto Uzumaki. He was a six year old, and not to mention the container of the most powerful biju. He was overlooking the village. He always loved to come up here and think and relax. It has always been a peaceful place for him. Two weeks ago, the third Okage told him that he submitted his ninja form for him to become an academy student. So from tomorrow on, he'll be going on to be academy. Soon to become a shinobi. His dream was to become the Hokage so that he can support the village that he loves so dearly, protect everyone. His dream is to also surpass a Fort Okagi, who was one of his heroes, and get acknowledged by everyone as someone, someone important. For some reason the villagers does not like him. He didn't know why, and Gigi would not tell him much about it. Every time he asked, the answer always remained the same. I will tell you, when you're old enough to know the truth, he had already started his basic training two years ago, and his Gigi helped him with some basic, Kaijutsu techniques. He is very good with shuriken throwing and kunai techniques as he has trained his body for speed and quick reflex. From tomorrow on he's going to be taking his first step towards his dream. He was still nervous thinking about it. Normally he was very calm and thoughtful and insightful. As it starts from a young age showing notes of a trait of maturity for someone so young and how to deal with complex situations but at the same time he's still a young boy of 6 years old. So it shouldn't be surprised that he felt nervous. He blinked as he glanced up. He did not even realize how long he was sitting there. As the sky was already filling with stars. So lost in his thoughts he didn't notice that someone snuck up behind him. As a person came to a stop. Ah, uh, I knew that I would find you here Nurutakan. At hearing that voice Naruto turned to see his surrogate grandfather. Sir Toby Hirsen, the third Okage of Kanoha. With a kind smile on his face. He was wearing his formal robes. What are you doing here, JJ? said Naruto. I thought you would be busy with your paperwork. Upon hearing about paperwork, Kirsten's face twitched a bit before he composed himself. Don't talk about my paperwork, Naruto-kun, I swear. It's a bane on all Kagis. As Naruto just shook his head and turned around, as he looked over, seeing the street lights start to light up. As Kirsten walked over and stood beside him as he acted with concern. Is something on your mind, Naruto-kun, he said. 
Naruto knew that he could talk about anything with him. He was always concerned and helped him whenever he was in need. He also took him to get Ichiwaka ramen whenever he could. He was always looking out for his best interests. Most importantly, he was the most important person he had within his life. As Naruto turned towards him, I'm just a little nervous, he said. Tomorrow is going to be my first day in the academy and the first step towards my dreams. I'm just scared. Scared of being a failure. Listening to him, here's an axe. What is your dream, Naruto-kun? Naruto was quiet for a while before he spoke up. I want to become a shinobi among shinobis. Stronger than all, surpassing all the previous kagis. I want to become the strongest of all of them. That is quite a big dream you have there, Hiruzen said. A gentle smile framed in his face. He knew that Naruto was a very talented kid, far more mature than the others his age. Hearing him say that he wanted to become the best, become Hokage, Hiruzen was always happy to hear him say that. Why do you want to become the Hokage? I want to become Hokage so I can protect the village. The village that previous Hokages, along with many shinobis, have given their life for. Then everyone will respect me and acknowledge me as someone, said Naruto. Hearing this and seeing the determination in Naruto's eyes, Hiruzen was deeply impressed. To think that a young boy like this could have a mindset at such a young age, and that Hiruzen knew that Minato would be extremely proud if he saw his son. How proud he would be to see how he was growing up as a person. Hiruzen was going to tell him very soon about his parents, and the fact that the Nine Tails was also inside of him. Sooner or later, he was going to tell Naruto everything. Getting out of his thoughts, he turned back towards Naruto. I'm impressed, Naruto kun, he said. You're only six, and you already know what it takes to be a Hokage. You already possess the will of fire, Hiruzen said, a genuine smile on his face. As Naruto looked confused, will of fire? What does that mean, he said. Seeing his confusion, Hiruzen elaborated. The village is a big family in here. Everyone's a family. The desire to protect one. Build stronger bonds between everyone within the village. That is what the Will of Fire means. That is the job of the Hokage and every shinobi of the village. It is why we protect each other in our home. Now you understand what it means to be a shinobi and what it means to be Hokage. Hearing that Naruto turn as he glanced over the village, as he could see people happily walking the village. They looked small but they were down there walking, chatting, talking to another family. You always protect your family, as he realized what the village means. Now he knew what he had to do. He turned back. I promise, Jiji, he said. I'll protect the peace. I'll protect the village. I'll do whatever I can in my power to make sure no harms befall my comrades, friends, and family. I will show no mercy in defending them. I give my word, said Naruto, his eyes bright with nothing but determination. Hiruzen walked over and gently rested a hand on his shoulder. The man was proud, immensely so. I can see it, he said. You, Nurutakan, you will be a great shinobi and an even greater Hokage. I believe in you. Thanks, said Naruto. I promise I won't let you down. Here's a smile. Come on now, he said it's late. After all, you're starting your first day tomorrow. Wouldn't want to be late for your first day. As Naruto nodded, come, here's and said, I'll treat you to some Ichiraku ramen. As the both of them made their way, as they arrived at the ramen stand, the walk there was rather quiet as they just observed the streets. They both went inside and sat on the stools. As they caught Toki attention, the owner of the store. As he came over to his favorite customer, sitting down, along with the third Hokage. Hokage-sama, Naruto-kan, it's been a while. How are you two, he said. It hasn't been that long, old man, said Naruto. I've been busy with my training. He knew Toki and his daughter Ayam, they had always treated him well. Considering that they named him their best customer, and they also gave him free ramen on special occasions. He also noticed the man cared for him as he always asked him what was happening in his life, and if he was okay if he looked like he was feeling down. So what will you guys have? I'll have one bowl of pork ramen please, Hiruzen said, and I'll have the usual, said Naruto. Alright, one bowl of pork ramen and the Naruto special coming right up, said Toki. After some time he came back with two bowls. One bigger than the other as a larger one is placed in front of Naruto. The both of them said thank you for the food as they dug in. As a new voice entered, Naruto-kun, Hokage-sama, how are you? As they found Ayam as she came around the counter standing with her father, the voice coming from her. She greeted them with a big happy smile on her face. She was 11 years old. 
Brown hair with dark eyes. Fair skin like Naruto's. I am fine, I am Chan. How are you here, Sensei? I am also fine, Okage-sama, she said, with a smile before she turned towards her favorite blonde as she placed her elbows on the counter. So, Naruto, tomorrow's gonna be your first day at Ninja Academy. Are you done with your preparing, she asked. Yes, I am Chan, said Naruto. I am finished with all the preparation. That's good, she said. Do well with your academics. As Naruto nodded, I will. Yeah, brat, become big and strong and make us proud, took his head, making Naruto smile and say that he will. They chatted for a bit more until Naruto made his way home, arriving toward his one-bedroom apartment. The place was decent and clean as Naruto moved towards the bathroom as he got freshened up before he hopped into bed, setting his alarm for 5 a.m. The next morning, Naruto woke up as he reached over and shut the alarm off. A smile on his face as he wasn't as nervous as before. He first went to the bathroom as he got cleaned up. He stepped out with a towel wrapped around his waist. He dried himself with another. As Naruto placed on a blue navy, Uzumaki shirt, the swirl was on the front, black pants and sandals. He looked at himself in the mirror as he brushed his hair down. He then checked the books that the third had bought him before. He placed them in his school bag. After he was done, he looked at the clock and noticed he still had some time before. He head to the academy. Seeing that he still had time left, he went to the kitchen to prepare some egg and toast and drink some milk for breakfast. Gigi had taught him how to cook so he knew how to cook a few things as he stepped and sat at the dining table as he started to eat. While eating, he pulled out a book and started to read, a book for sealing beginners. The third Okage saw that he had an interest in the art as he decided to give Naruto a book on it. He had learned that the second and fourth Okage was very good at it as he wanted to learn more about it. He hadn't started practicing making the seals yet though. The Hokage had warned him not to practice seal on his own without proper supervision or until he gave him the OK stamp of approval if he was better and he also had to work on his calligraphy. Once he was done, he washed his dishes. As Naruto made his way, as he took to the roof, time skip, 10 minutes later, Naruto arrived at the massive gates. As he was at the academy, he went inside and noticed the kids were all around his age as they stood waiting for the third Kage it seems, seeing that all the teachers are also gathered as well. He also noticed that parents stood behind the kids, some of them gave him a glare, but he did not pay them much mind though as he went to stand in a line. A few minutes later the third arrived, gaining everyone's attention. Congratulations on your acceptance into the academy everyone. From this day forth do your best to reach your goals of becoming a shinobi of this village. You are all going to be the future for our village, so take your studies and training seriously. Do your best and good luck to you all. He finished his speech as there was a proud smile on his face. The family members said goodbye to their kids as the teachers took them away towards the classroom. As Naruto took a seat near the corner, up to the window. Settling down, Naruto noticed some of the girls were glancing at him. He said nothing though as he just looked towards the door. As it opened up to show a teacher, the man was 18 years old. Average height, brown hair, brown eyes, a ponytail. There was a scar across his nose as he was wearing the chonin flap jacket. His name was Iruka Mino. He introduced himself and from today on, I will be your sensei. Very well then, he said after get a course of yes. We will start with the introductions first. Just telling us your names and dreams will be alright for the first. Naruto look as he saw there was a lot of clan kids. Nara, Akimichi, Yamanaka. Abarame Uchiyas. Seeing that it was now his turn, he got up. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, and my dream is to become the Hokage and protect. The hidden leaf, he said. Once he sat down, Naruto noticed that everyone was looking at him with surprise, some hiding it better than the others. As he paid them no mind and glanced towards a bird, sitting outside in a tree. Soon the introductions came to an end as Arika smiled at them. Okay, class, he said. I know that some of you have already been taught ninjutsu in your household. Here at the academy though you will also be training coordination and how to work properly in a group. The fundamentals are very important so make sure that you learn them well. Now then, our first lecture is going to be on history. The lecture went without any instant however Arika was proud as Naruto was able to answer all questions that he gave to him. After a small break he called for all of them to gather up for shuriken and kunai practice as he wanted to see what they already know. He took them towards the back where the training posts were all located. 
there was also a few buckets of shuriken and kunai. As he told them to start practicing, he stepped back as he watched on the sidelines, observing them. When he noticed Naruto, he was once again impressed with Naruto's skills going in. To think that he was throwing four kunai at a time and hitting the dead center every time, he made his way towards him for a small chat. As Naruto paused turning towards him, You are very skilled with kunai and shuriken throwing, Naruto, he said. Thanks, Sensei, said Naruto. I've been training in my alone time. Well, I must say I'm impressed that you're taking your training so seriously at this young age. As Naruto nodded with a small smile, well, if you ever need any help, you can come to me, alright? Aruka knew that Naruto did not have many people in his life, and some of the villagers did not treat him well because of him being the Jinjulki of the Nine Tails. As Aruka did not hold any grudge against Naruto because he knew the difference of a demon fox and Naruto. He knew that Naruto was the one that was keeping the fox at bay and protecting this village. He really wanted to help him because he knew that he was just a lonely kid and didn't have much people to support him. Aruka himself had lost his parents in the Nine Tails attack so he could understand himself. Thanks Sensei, I will. As Naruto was happy that his Sensei was willing to help him and not like some of the others, Aruka smiled and went to help some of the others that were not doing it properly. After about 30 minutes, he gathered them all. It's time for a Taijutsu lesson, he said. Before that though, is there anyone that is up for a spar? After a few seconds, one of the students stepped forward, his arms crossed and arrogant smirk on his face. Seeing that Aruka needed one more student for the match, but no one was volunteering, he decided to choose for himself. Come on, naruto he said, you're up. As Naruto walked forward, as he stepped right in a circle, the other kid looked him over with an arrogant look as Naruto was relaxed. You should give up Blondie. You don't stand a chance against a Uchiha. You won't be able to touch me. The black haired child said, showing his traits of a Uchiha black hair and dark eyes. As Naruto looked at him from head to toe, before glancing towards Iruka, wondering when he was going to start the match. Okay you two, before we start the match, you need to make a proper... The kid interrupted Iruka. Come on Sensei, he said, just start the match already. So I can put him in his place, trying to act all cool in front of everyone. Enough Uchiha-san, Aruka said, stopping him. Shinobi hand-to-hand -hand combat is a tradition passed down, from generation to generation. You might think it's stupid to act formal, but here at the academy we have respect for tradition. As Aruka showed them what to do, placing their hand forward to make the proper gesture. As both Naruto and the Uchiha placed their hand forward in the seal, interline the fingers. Both of them did as they were told before they stepped back. Alright, begin. The Uchiha wasted no time as he blasts right towards Naruto with a punch, aimed towards the blonde's face. Naruto grabbed his wrist and flipped him over. As Naruto put his feet out, the guy head rested on Naruto's feet so he would not bump his head on the ground. As Naruto held his arm, he was unable to move. The match is over, Aruka said, shocking his voice. As Naruto had ended the match in a matter of seconds, several girls squeal in shock. Whoa, naruto is so strong. He's so cool. He's so awesome. The Uchiha, stepping out of his shock, got to his feet slowly. Shock written all over his face. Good match, you two, Aruka said. Now both of you offer the seal of recognition. Reconciliation seal as they cross your fingers. The Uchiha looked like he just swallowed a thick lemon as he was angry, upset. That was just a second. The rest of the day was uneventful. As Naruto made his way towards the tower once it came to an end, he knocked on the door as Harrison said come in. Ah, naruto -kan, he said. How was your first day at the academy? As Naruto did not answer, instead he spoke. About something completely different. Gigi, can you teach me some jutsu, he said. Harrison paused in his paperwork. Aren't they teaching you that in the academy? But Gigi, it's too easy what they're teaching me there. I did everything the sensei asked, and I even defeated Uchiha today easily in a spar. As there was a frown on his face, how easy everything was. He was looking for a challenge to get himself stronger. Here is in listen as he got up and walked over, as he patted Naruto on the head. Well done, he said. You're quite talented for your age, however. I cannot teach you much, it will be unfair to the other students. And as Okage, I cannot show favoritism to anyone. Naruto was upset but he nodded. As he understood, seeing the sad look on his face though Hiruzen felt bad, knowing that some of the other clan students had their clan and their family back in them. 
He walked back towards his desk and opened one of his drawers. As he pulled out several scrolls. Here, take these scrolls. They have some advanced chakra control exercise and academy level jutsu in them. It will help you in the future, he said. Naruto's eyes lit up as he took the scrolls a large grin. Thank you, Jiji, he said. He isn't simply chuckled as he smiled as he sat back down. Well, you can ask me for anything, he said. Alright? As Naruto nodded. Okay, I'll see you later, he said. As he made his way to get some training done. As Hiruzen returned back to work, Naruto left the office as excitement was coursing through every fiber of his being. Arriving at the train ground near to the forest, he always came here to train. Not many people came here so he would be all alone and have his privacy. Opening the first scroll, Naruto saw three techniques. Transformation Jutsu, Substitution Jutsu, Firestyle Jutsu, both E rank and one C rank. Hmm, not bad. He started to read the description of the Jutsus, trying to understand them. First, the transformation, then the substitution, then the fireball jutsu. He then opened the second scroll. Inside was the techniques on how to better control your chakra with a leaf balancing exercise. The second one was the tree walking exercise without using your hands. And the third one was the water walking exercise that seemed to be the most difficult. He decided to start with the first chakra control exercise. Having a better chakra would prove to be easier to use the other jutsus. So with that he got the training. Six months later. It's been six months since he joined the academy. Naruto had mastered several of the jutsu that Hirsen gave him months ago. His only problem was his chakra was massive and it was hard to control. He had completed all the chakra exercises but he had too much chakra he could not form the clone jutsu. The third Akagi told him that the clone jutsu require a small amount of chakra to be formed and Naruto was just releasing too much his body was capable of producing more than he needed for the jutsu. As for the academy they were still going about history and theories about chakra so he did not learn anything yet. His teachers were shocked, Aruka beyond impressed at seeing the rate that Naruto was growing. Some of the teachers were afraid of his growing rate and some of them were, well, showing disgust. Some of the nice ones were even called him a genius in the shinobi arts. Today he was practicing a new taijutsu style. A month ago the Hokage showed him a style called the hummingbird to which he perfectly adapted to because of his speed and reflex. Naruto was quite shocked when he was told that the hummingbird was created and used by the fourth Okage himself. While Naruto was ecstatic to learn it, he was also confused, wondering why the third Okage would teach in the fourth Okage fighting style. However, he decided to save that for a later date as he slipped into the stance. He had not mastered it yet but he was getting more fluid and more faster in his strikes as he was coming along nicely with it. Naruto felt someone watching him for some time now but he did not know where they were. As he decided to speak up, come on out he said, I know that you're there. As he looked around, I'm up here, a voice said. Glance into the tree Naruto saw a boy that was around 12 or 13, waving at him. Who are you and why are you spying on me said Naruto. As the boy looked down towards him, my name is Itachi Uchiha he said. He had dark eyes. There was lines in his face, as they seemed like stress lines. He had dark hair as well, typical look for any Uchiha. He was wearing mostly black and grey, with black sandals. You did not answer my question Itachi-san said Naruto, his eyes narrowing. Itachi answer, I am not spying on you he said. I came here to train. As Naruto looked him over to see if he was lying before he turned, as he started to focus on shuriken and kunai practice, forgetting about Itachi. Itachi watched as Naruto threw four kunais as he hit all the targets. You know, it's very rude to ignore a person standing beside you. You haven't even introduced yourself yet. Itachi was now standing beside him as Naruto turned, looking at the boy. He did not even hear anything. Oh, I'm sorry, said Naruto. I forgot. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. Nice to meet you, he said. As he gave him a small smile, which Itachi reflected, it reminded him of his little brother. It's nice to meet you too, Nurutakan, he said. But would you mind telling me why you're here? You should be at the academy this time of day. I'm sure Hokage Sama would not be happy if he found out that you were skipping your classes. Naruto got a bit embarrassed at that. He was caught. As he had started to skip class about a month ago, the same time the old man Hokage gave him the hummingbird taijutsu. But he knew that if the old man found out he would be in some serious trouble. 
As he looked towards Itachi, you're not gonna tell him, right? Itachi chuckled slightly at his question. It's alright, Nurutakan, he said. But would you mind telling me why you're skipping your classes? Nurutakan sighed. Well, they don't teach anything important in there. All they're teaching is chakra introduction and history lesson. That stuff is... Well, I already know it, and it's really boring. I can see that you're very talented for your age. I understand. Itachi said glancing towards the kunas and shurikens that were around the training field. As he turned back towards Naruto, where did you learn to do this? As Naruto smiled, Hokage Jiji helped me, he said. From time to time, Itachi nodded, not at all surprised by the relationship that both him and the Hokage had. Would you mind if I train with you, naruto he said. As Naruto blinked, surprised by that. Of course not, he said. You can train here with me anytime. As Itachi nodded with appreciation, he took out eight kunais holding four in both hands. As Naruto watched him curious what he was going to do, as he jumped high in the air before launching all eight, two more then popped into his hand as he threw them towards the other two that was going off direction. They deflected off each other and changed their direction in mid-air. Because of this, all the targets were hit, even the blind spot targets. Right as the last kunai hit his feet, softly landed on the ground. Naruto was shocked, eyes wide. That was so cool. How did you do that, he said. Itachi turned and looked towards him, looking slightly amused, as he watched the reaction in Naruto's eyes. Well, the kunai jutsu is one of my specialties, he said. Can you teach me how to do that, Itachi-san? Naruto said, excitement quote in his voice. I can teach you. You just have to keep on practicing and improve your aiming, Itachi said. As he stood up straight once again, giving a small smile to Naruto as his face relaxed. Itachi then showed him how to hold Kuna in his hand. As he showed him how to hold them more properly with more added numbers. As Naruto tried to do it, however, he could not hit the Kuna as mid-ear. He tried to do it over and over again, but he could not hit the ones in mid-ear. Itachi seeing this, shook his head and spoke up. You will get it in due time, Rutakan, he said. You just have to keep on practicing. Mainly your aim, as that seemed to be your main problem. Naruto sighed as he nodded towards Itachi. He knew that Itachi was right, but he was disappointed that he wasn't able to get it even after so many tries. He then started once again, now determined to learn the move. After some more try, Naruto was able to hit them in mid-air, but he was not able to change the target direction to hit the hidden targets yet. However, he was getting closer. Itachi who stood at the side was beyond shock and impressed with Naruto's progress. It kind of reminded him of himself, but seeing that Naruto was getting tired. I think that's enough for today, Naruto-kan, he said. You should probably get some rest. As Naruto nodded, agreeing with him as he was starting to slow down, he walked over and sat on a log next to Itachi. As Itachi spoke to him, You did well today, he said. I didn't expect you to improve in this short amount of time. Thank you, Itachi-san, said Naruto, for teaching me your kunai technique. It's quite alright, Naruto-kan, he said. I'm glad to see you getting the hang of it so quickly. Itachi was quite happy that he finally got to meet Naruto. He had really wanted to meet him for a long time now. He was first curious about him because the adults always spoke badly of him. His curiosity turned to warmth once he finally met him. He got that little brother feel from Naruto. Itachi also knew who Naruto's parents were. His mother, Mikoto, was best friends with Naruto's parents, Kushina Uzumaki and Minato Namikaze. He himself was quite close to them as well before they passed. Kushina was his godmother. He had spent a lot of time with her, loving her company. He could still remember when Kushina said that he was going to be a big brother. Flashback, a six-year-old Itachi was walking with his mother and his godmother. As he wondered why they were here, as he looked towards Kushina, who was ahead of him, on Kushna, he said, Are you sick? Kushna laughed as she turned around with a smile on her face, looking towards him. No, Itachi-kan, she said. I'm quite fine. Itachi was confused as he asked innocently. Then why are we visiting the hospital, he said. You see, she said with a smile. I'm going to become a mother soon. Believe it. That's why I have to come in for a checkup. Itachi eyes widened hearing that. She was going to be a mother? As he asked another question. Does this mean I'm going to be a big brother, he said. Her grin turned into a gentle, loving smile as she looked towards him. She turned as she poked him in the forehead with two fingers. A loving smile on her face. Yes, Itachi-kan, she said. You're going to be a big brother. Itachi rubbed his forehead, but he was glad. His mother, who was standing to the side, 
smile as she saw the interaction between her son and Kushner, who was like a sister to her. She knew that her son was very close to Kushner and Minato, but her husband Fukaku was against it. He didn't want Itachi interacting a lot with the both of them. As she then realized it was getting late, we should get going Kushner. Fukaku would not be happy if he's aware that me and Itachi came to visit you. Kushner snorted as she heard that name. She was still not happy that Mikato had married that bastard, but she nodded. It's alright. You and Itachi can come by anytime though. My home is always welcome to you too. As she turned towards Itachi before she poked him on the forehead once again. Bye Itachi-kan, she said. See you around. Bye Aunt Kushner, he said, waving goodbye. In the flashback, Itachi was snapped back to reality. I'm sorry. What did you say, Nurutakan? He said, focusing back on the blonde. Why is there fighting in life? Itachi was caught completely off guard of all the things that he expected Naruto to say. That was definitely not one of them. He was quiet for a while, as he himself was asking the same question as well. Who knows, he said. But if fighting can be stopped, I want to stop it, he said. Naruto was quiet for a bit, as he looked down into his lap. He then glanced up. I would like to do the same thing. I don't like unnecessary fighting. Itachi looked at him with unreadable eyes. Then why are you training if you don't like to fight? So that I can become the strongest Hokage and protect our village and people be forced to respect me, said Naruto. Well, that's quite a big goal you have. Good luck with accomplishing it, Itachi said. As Naruto thanked him, I should be going now, he said. Thank you for everything as he gave him a small bow. He waved goodbye as Itachi waved towards him. Itachi watched as he headed off. He has been trying so long to introduce himself, but he did not know how to confront him. Nevertheless, he was glad that he finally met him. He had promised himself that he would look after Naruto. On the other hand, there was still the situation with his clan. As they slowly start to lose their patience with the village, things after the KUB attack, as a higher up of the village, start to accuse Uchiha's of being the ones behind the attack. Now as he has joined the envoy, his father wanting to supply secret information for his clan benefit. He knew that his clan would go to any lengths to take by the power that he wanted. He just hoped that his little brother and Naruto will not get involved in it. Time skip. Naruto's apartment. Arriving back home after his hefty working out day. As Naruto was now practicing some calligraphy as it was night time. That is when he heard a knock on his door. Already knowing who it was. As Naruto got up and opened it to see, none other than Jiji. Jiji, I've been waiting for you to come by, said Naruto. As Naruto was in a happy high spirits. Well, I wanted to talk to you about something, but first, would you mind if I come in? As Naruto realized that he did not invite him yet. Uh, of course, he said. As he stepped aside, as Harrison stepped inside. The place was always tidy and clean as usual. That is when he saw. So, you were doing some calligraphy, he said. Yeah, said Naruto as he walked over and packed up the sheets of paper. So, where were you today, he said. I got news that you did not attend today academy classes. It's not just today either. You have not been attending classes for around a month. As Naruto started to look uncomfortable, not meeting the old man's eyes. What are you saying, Jiji, he said. Don't try to hide it from me, Naruto-kun. Your academy teacher, Aruka, has come to my office this afternoon. Telling me about the whole situation. So tell me, why have you not been going to the academy? Naruto sighed and decided to come clean. Fine, you caught me, he said. I already know the stuff they're teaching me, said Naruto. That does not mean that you can just skip them. Don't take the classes for granted, you still have a lot to learn, naruto -kun. It seems to me that you're getting arrogant in your skills, thinking that the academy is a waste of time for you, Hiruzen said. As Naruto lowered his head in shame. He never liked to upset his Jiji that cared so much for him. This time though he was the reason for getting his Jiji upset at him. He was ashamed for letting him down. I'm sorry Jiji, he said. I won't let it happen again. As he still did not meet his eyes. Listen, Rutakan Harrison said. I know that you already know all the things they're teaching you in the academy. But everyone cannot be like you. In the academy they teach you according to your age. That is not all they teach though. They also teach you how to communicate and form a bond with your fellow comrades, who of which you're going to be working with in the future. Right now you don't know anything about it or them. As Naruto nodded, his head still looking down. I understand, Jiji, he said, I promise. I won't do anything else to upset you. 
I will attend my classes regularly from now on. Harrison relaxed slightly as he smiled at Naruto. Glad that he understood the basics. I am glad that you understood this, but would you mind telling me what you were doing when you were not attending classes? As Naruto was happy that he forgave him. As he glanced up meeting his eyes. I was training during that time. I even met someone at training grounds. He was pretty cool and strong as well. At this, Harrison had his full attention on Naruto. Who was this person that you met? He was from the Uchiha clan. Harrison's face got completely serious at that. His name was Itachi Uchiha. He was pretty strong and he even taught me a kunai jutsu. Harrison relaxed hearing that. Glad to hear that he was Itachi of all people. He knew about the close relationship that Itachi had with Naruto parents. Thus making him care for Naruto very much. Yes, Itachi. He's a very talented boy and he's quite strong as well. He even graduated from the academy at the age of 7. And he's being considered a prodigy amongst our shinobi. He recently joined the Anvu. The youngest ever member to join the Anvu ranks. As Naruto's eyes was wide at the information that Jiji was giving him. He was pretty sure that he wasn't supposed to know these things about Itachi rank. Graduating at 7 though. And now being the youngest Anvu operative. Naruto was beyond impressed. To graduate at 7 years old, Itachi must be quite a powerful ninja. Wow. He's really strong then, said Naruto. Yes, yes he is. You're also very talented, Naruto-kun. I'm sure that you will also achieve great things if you train hard enough. A big smile came on Naruto's face here and that's... Time skip. Four months later. It had been four months since Naruto met Itachi and confessed that he was indeed skipping classes to Harrison. On the next day he had came to class and he got scolded by Aruka for doing something like that. He apologized to Aruka and told him that he would not do it again within the future. And he had kept his promise. He also met Itachi next time they went there for training. They soon started their training schedule. Day by day his relationship with Itachi had grown. As Naruto even started calling Big Brother Itachi. Now he was in class as Aruka was teaching a history lesson. As Naruto was not paying much attention because he already started to read history books from JJ Library. Though when Aruka mentioned Minato Namikaze before Takagi, Naruto started to pay attention. The man was considered to be the fastest ninja to ever live and one of the greatest Hokages within Konoha. He was one of Naruto's biggest role models. Aruka started to speak about the Nine Tails attack on October the 10th, where the fourth guy gave his life to kill the Biju. Naruto blinked in confusion hearing Aruka say that. Confused by the story, not understanding, he read in the book from the first Kage saying that the Madara incident in the Valley of the Inn, as Abicho could not be killed because they are forms of chakra. He raised his hand as Aruka turned towards him. Yes, Naruto, you have a question. Yes, I'm confused about something. You said the Fort Kage sacrificed his life to kill the Nine Tails, correct? But I read a book about the history of the first Hokage, which was in the Hokage's office. And it clearly said that you cannot kill a Biju. Naruto said confused. As the whole class heard what he said, as one of the students spoke up, What are you saying, Uzumaki? Are you doubting the fourth Kage power to kill the Kayubi? What are you saying, Naruto? Aruka said. Acting strange. I'm not doubting the fourth Kage's power. I'm just asking, said Naruto. What I read in the book, at the Valley of the End, Hoshirama Senju and Madara Uchiha had a battle of great proportions and the Uchiha summoned the Kayubi and used it to assist him in the battle against the first Okage. However, with the power of his release, he was able to defeat Madara and the Kayubi as well, but he could not kill it because it was impossible. After his battle with Madara Uchiha, he started to collect all of the tail beasts 1 to 9 and gave them out towards the other nations to maintain peace. The sand village has the one tails, the cloud has the eight and two tails, the stone has the five and four tails, the mist has the three and six tails. And as a sign to maintain peace and power in balance, the seven tails was given to the waterfall village as a peace treaty because the assassination that was placed on the first guy's life. The whole class was speechless when they heard that. They did not know any of this at all. Some of them wondering how did Naruto get his hands on that kind of information. Aruka himself was speechless as Naruto continued. What I don't understand is, there was no mention of the Kyubi in the book at all. 
However, if the first Kage was giving out the other tail beasts to balance power, why didn't it mention about the hidden leaf getting one? I mean, how could there be balance if all of the village had one? And one did not. What happened to the Kyube at the valley at the end? There was no mention of the beast until the 10th of October. As Naruto finished, the whole class was silent. No one knowing what to say. Aruka was sweating bullets. What was he supposed to say? What was he gonna say? That the Fortikaya sealed the beast. That he contained it inside of Naruto? No. The Hokage would kill him if he ever said that. As he looked towards Naruto who was waiting for an answer, he noticed how nervous his sensei was being. However, it seems like Kami was on his side. The bell went off, signaling that it was the end of the class. Well, I think that's it for today. We will meet here again tomorrow. Please do your homework and enjoy the rest of the day, everyone. With that, he exited the classroom as he lowered his eyes away from Naruto. As Naruto did not like his quest and being ignored, as he started to get annoyed by all the secrecy, as everyone did not like to talk about the KB attack. As he left the classroom as he decided to get his answers later. The children were still staring at him though, as none of them even knew about this information. Some of them didn't even know that there were other tail beasts out there. Time skip. Harrison was in his office with three older individuals, as they were his former teammates. When there was a knock on the door, Seeing that they were almost finished, Harrison spoke up. Come in, he said. The door opened as Aruka came in. Hokage-sama, elders, I apologize for interrupting. I will come some other time if you're busy. Harrison shook his head. It's quite alright, Aruka, he said. We're mostly finished for the day. What brings you here? I wanted to discuss with you about one of my students in the academy. As Harrison raised the eyebrow wondering what was so important. Unless this was about Naruto. And who might the student be here as an axe? It's Naruto Uzumaki Hokage-sama. This caught the elder's attention. Donzo Shimira especially. He had tried on several occasions for Naruto Uzumaki to be handed over to him so that he could mold him into the perfect shinobi but he failed every single time. The third Akagi denying him on every turn. Hiruzen saw the look on Donzo's face. He wanted to avoid discussing anything in front of him that interested Naruto. But he realized he couldn't just ask him to leave because it would lead to a pointless argument and a complicated discussion. What about him? Did he do something new? Yes and no. I mean, no Hokage-sama, he said. It's just, I don't know how to handle him. Aruka said. As he himself was nervous how to explain what happened today to the Hokage. What do you mean you can't handle him? Say clearly so I can understand your situation. Hiruzen knew that Aruka had no negative views regarding Naruto, unlike some other people within the village. He himself had made it clear with Aruka before, the start of the academy. That time Aruka ensured him that he did not hold anything against Naruto, and knew how difficult his life would be without family and friends. During today's lecture, I was teaching a class about history and the past of the Fort Akagi. Everything was going normal until it reached a Kyubi attack and the death of the Fort Akagi by defeating the Kyubi. Hiruzen and the elders saw where this was going, as the law could not be broken and told to any of the younger generation so, to them, the beast was killed by the Fort Akagi. Naruto himself didn't even know the truth about him being the Jinjuliki. After I was finished, Naruto asked, how was the Fort Akagi able to kill the Nine Tails if the first could not? He spoke about the battle in the final valley where the first Kage faced off against Madara Uchiha and the Nine Tails, and the first Kage was able to subdue it but not kill it. He also spoke that the first Kage went around collecting all the eight other Bijus and giving them out to each nation so that they could bond friendship and keep the balance of power. Harrison and the three elders, even Danzo who normally keep his face calm was rather shocked by this. They never expected this from any academy student but they list the Aruka he continue. That's not all. He asked me why didn't the Leaf Village get any Biju? If the first Kage was given the tail beasts out to keep balance and power then, Konoha must have kept one for himself. He also asked why the name of the Nine Tails was not mentioned anywhere until said Biju attacked the village on October 10th. Aruka said finishing his explanation. The Hokage and the elders knew that this was a dangerous situation that they were in with Naruto. They could not tell him that he was a Jinjulika the Kyube. More importantly that the Biju was already in the village 
after the valley of the end. Mito Uzumaki had sealed it within herself so it could not bring harm to others. The whole truth was being kept as a secret from the general population. Only a few people know the full truth. Kaharu, Harrison's former teammate, turned towards him. What are you going to do about this Harrison, she said, in a serious matter. As she wondered how did the boy get his hands on this information in the first place. Harrison who was deep in thought did not respond. As he was thinking about everything Aruka said, he knew that Naruto was a very smart and mature kid for his age. One day he will have to tell him the truth but he was not ready for it yet. Hokage-sama, Aruka said, dragging him out of his thoughts. As he spoke first, Aruka, do you know where he got this information? Yes, Hokage-sama. He said you read it in a book on the first Kage, Hushirama Senju from your personal library. Harrison mentally cursed himself. As he rubbed his forehead in frustration, he should have known. Naruto was always curious about things with his interest in the previous Hokage's life. He had allowed Naruto to read the books from his personal library. It seems that was a bad decision on his part. The elders looked at him before Danzo stated, You're getting careless, Herzen. Allowing the Uzumaki boy to read your personal library, you know that there can be some sensitive information that should not be known to the others, let alone a kid. Harrison's sign looked towards Aruka. What did you say to him, Aruka? I didn't answer him, the bell rung. And I dismissed class. Good. I will speak to Naruto myself. You don't have to do anything, just continue your classes as it is. Yes, Hokage-sama, Aruka said. As Hiruzen nodded before dismissing him, Aruka bowed as he left the office. Once he was gone, Danzo spoke up. You should hand the Jinjulki over to me, Hiruzen. I will train him to become a loyal shinobi of leaf. Then, we will have the perfect weapon against the other nations. I will not be doing no such thing. And don't think you can take me for a fool, Danzo. I know that you only want his power. I will make this clear. Naruto will be a shinobi under my command. A leaf shinobi. Not some emotionless drone that you want him to be. Do you understand me, he said. His eyes narrowing, his voice coming out dangerously. It would be the best option in my opinion. Let Danzo take care of Naruto. Homura spoke up. As Koharu also nodded agreeing with him. I did not ask for any of your opinions on the matter. You three are only here to advise me, not command me. This conversation is over. Dismiss, he said. As they tried to argue with him. I said dismiss. As Homura and Koharu made their way. Donzo sent him one more glance. As Hiruzen spoke not looking up. Donzo get this through your head. If you make any kind of move against Naruto. Or make any way to contact him. I will execute you. Do you understand me? Hiruzen glanced up his eyes dangerously. Focusing on the man. As Donzo tightened his fists, I understand Harrison, he said, as he left leaving Harrison who rubbed his temples, in frustration. I'm getting too old for this, he thought to himself. Time skip. Naruto was trying to calm his mind as he sat under a tree. What happened in class was still right on his mind. He couldn't understand why the academy was hiding some of the past events. More importantly, the Nine Kill Fox incident from the students. As he was too caught up in his thoughts, not feeling the other person. Enter in the field. Naruto-kun. As he recognized the voice. Big brother Itachi, he said. When did you get here? Just a moment ago, he said. As he saw the look on Naruto's face. Is there something on your mind? Naruto knew that he could trust Itachi and share anything with him. Because he became like a big brother figure to him. It was due to the lecture in the academy that Aruka said something that I don't understand. Why would he teach wrong information about the past? When I questioned him, he didn't answer any of my questions. Curious what he was talking about Itachi acts. What was he teaching you? And why did you think that it was wrong information? As Naruto explained what had happened, the more Itachi listened, the more nervous he got as he thought about what he could tell Naruto. He cannot tell Naruto that Fox was sealed inside him by the fort. He was still too young to know the truth. He also knew that Naruto was immensely smart, so he had to find the right thing to say otherwise. He would not stop until he get the answers that he wanted. The events you're speaking of is too old, Nurutakan, and they should remain in the past. There were some reasons for those events to be kept hidden, away from the general populace. Today's generation does not need to know about those past events, Itachi said. As Naruto was annoyed that the village was keeping this important information away from his generation, as he questioned him on it, 
Why the hell can't we know the truth? I mean, aren't we upcoming shinobis to protect this village as well? You have a good point, Nurutakan, but you have to understand. The times that we live in today are far different from the past. These are the times of peace, not war, where children were forced to grow up because of certain circumstances. The village is just trying for the children to live free life before they become shinobis. Naruto nodded towards him but he still did not agree with him. Don't worry naruto you will know the truth in coming times. Alright, I guess I understand, said Naruto. As Itachi walked over more towards him, so, how is your training today, he asks. As Naruto glanced up, it's going alright. I still have some problems though with the clone technique. I have completed the chuck control exercise but still, I can't perform the clone technique. Don't waste too much time on a single technique that would not be useful in a fight to you. It requires very little chakra concentration to do a technique. You on the other hand have too much chakra for a technique like that. What do you mean said Naruto? It's one of the three techniques I need to pass the academy, so if I can't do it. The normal jutsu can be easily identified by opponent. So don't waste your time on it, Itachi said. As Naruto raised the eyebrow and confused, didn't he just tell him that he needed to pass the academy? But it's still one of the three. If I don't learn it how, will I ever pass the academy? Well that's simple. I'm going to teach you a different and more advanced version of the jutsu. Really? said Naruto. What is it? he asked. I'm going to teach you the Shadow Clone Jutsu. It's a Joni level jutsu, a more advanced version of the normal clone jutsu, Itachi said. What makes it so different? Itachi brought up his hand as poof, Naruto watched a clone appeared. You see naruto -kan, it's called the Shire Clone Jutsu and it's not some kind of illusion. It's an actual replica of myself that I created by distributing some of my chakra into physical form, splitting my chakra equally among my clone. They can even be used in combat because they can perform jutsu, give new advantage in fights. However, one hit from the opponent and they will be taken down. And even with the Byakugan and Sharingan, it is impossible to identify the real one. It has many more advantages though, not just what I've listed. As Naruto nodded in understanding as he walked over and pulled the clone, who looked down towards him with a smile. It touched and dispelled the clone as he slowed down the handstands and showed Naruto how to perform it. Don't try to rush into it, just keep your head calm, alright? As Naruto stood there and watched him. Time skip, a few hours later. Naruto looked up towards the 10 copies of himself. He had much larger chakra than normal people so he could make a lot. As Naruto was beyond happy for learning such a high level technique. As he had a beaming smile on his face, this was just the beginning. As his big brother Itachi had helped him out greatly. But there was no telling how far he can go as Naruto was determined to become the greatest. Just the thought of that brought a smile to his face as Itachi stood there. Shock how fast Naruto had went over the technique and actually learned it. Naruto was something else alright, something special, something rare. And Itachi knew that his future was going to be bright, extremely so. However, Itachi had no idea how right he was. Unaware that Naruto had more than what he was already showing. But Naruto was unaware himself after all. He was definitely not normal. And I'm not talking about the Kyube. He was a special special child but the truth will be revealed soon yes very soon so just stay in tune and relax guys because i'm gonna be ending this episode right here but yes guys stay in tune relax and yeah comment down below and tell me if you're new so i can welcome you personally so without wasting more time let's say we get the hell out of here i'll be seeing you soon don't forget to go ahead and check out the other series yes four channels anime king anime king two anime king three anime prince so without further ado, what is to begin this? No guys, what am I saying? Let's get the hell out of here. See you guys soon. Peace.